Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Michelle at the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. Hello. Hi. And what do we have here? This is Yazi, one of our Rocky Mountain goats. So, with the name Rocky Mountain Goat, do you find these goats in the Rocky Mountains? You can find these goats in the Rocky Mountains. So we do have them here in Colorado, and they range up north and all the way over into Washington and Canada. And with it being a mountain goat, what adaptations does it have for life in the mountains? Yeah, that's a great question. So you'll notice she has horns on her head, so those could be used if she needed to spar with another goat. She can also use those horns in self-defense if she needed to. And then her hooves on her feet there, you'll notice, are split into toes. So she has two toes that can separate a little bit, and the bottom of her hoof uh, feels a lot like a hiking boot. So she can grip onto rocks and has um, a lot of agility because of that. So she's an excellent climber. And just from seeing the enclosure out there, it's all it's a rock cliff. That's right. So they must be good at climbing if they can yep, uh, handle these that. These guys are excellent climbers. Um, Yazi here is not scared of heights. She will go just as high as she can go on any rock. Um, they actually, with all four feet, could turn around on something the size of a piece of paper. So um, wow. incredibly agile climbers. Yeah, they're um, pretty awesome. So what do these animals eat in the wild? So out in the wild, these guys are going to be what we call browsers. So they're going to be eating a lot of different kinds of leaves and forage that they can find on the mountainside, small shrubs, um, but basically, mainly uh, leaves off of trees. And what do you feed them here? Yeah, so you'll notice I'm feeding her carrots. That's one of her favorite treats. She also gets apples to train. However, the main um, bulk of their diet is something that we call herbivore grain. So it's kind of like a dog food or cat food that you might be familiar with at home, but made specially for animals like Yazi here. And what kind of enrichment do you provide for these animals? Yeah, so these guys really like to play with their horns, especially Albert, our male on the other side. So we put out all kinds of toys for them to knock with their horns. We'll also make big piles of alfalfa with all their favorite treats inside, and they like to um, forage through that for hours at a time. So those are two of their probably favorite enrichments. And one of the first things I noticed when I was passing this enclosure is this little ramp that we have up above us. That's right, yeah. So Yazi here is our superstar. She does our Rocky Mountain Goat Show every day. And if you want me to try, I can see if she'll actually show you what she does with that. We probably could try, maybe after the interview, so yeah. we can uh, just yeah. keep her here. Yeah, so she's an excellent climber, and we'll uh, show you what she does with that. But this is all part of her show. So what kind of animals would try to prey on a mountain goat like this? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, we sometimes say that there have been a few bears that have gone after goats, but mainly things like mountain lions would be their biggest predator out in the wild, although they don't have a lot. They are large animals. And especially like up on the cliffs, bears aren't exactly the most agile animals. Exactly, and that's their predator um, response. That's how they're able to get away, is to go on places that other animals literally just can't reach. So, yep, that's how they get away. And obviously the horns help with that too. Yes, they, the horns could help. Um, I think if a predator finally got close enough that they could use their horns, they're probably in a bit of trouble anyway. But they could like use a last resort. Yeah, I would think so. So how does this uh, bright white color help them in the wild? Yeah, so even though it looks bright white right here with all this green backdrop, it actually is a really great camouflage for these guys. So they can blend into the rocks out on their exhibit, and if they're not moving, you can quickly lose them within the rocks. They camouflage so well. And while we're out uh, in the front of the enclosure waiting for the, um, uh, you guys, you guys have responsibilities to do this. So while we're waiting for you guys, uh, we're watching people go to the enclosure and having the hardest time finding them. Yep. Uh, even though they're right there at the top or almost right there in front of them, yep. just having the hardest time finding them due to the coloration and all the like brighter colored rocks there. Yeah, sometimes even though I work with them every day, I go out there and unless I see one kind of turn their head, I'm like, where are you? They can be right in front of me and I don't see them sometimes. What's one of your favorite things about these mountain goats? I really like the vocalizations they make. Uh, they are such large animals, especially Albert, our male. He's so big, but the sound he makes is the cutest little goat sound. It's a little bit like, Nee! <laughs> so it's really cute. <laughs> so. What would the vocal vocalizations help them with in the wild? They can communicate with one another through their vocalizations, especially during um, breeding season. That's a lot of what they're doing. Their calls can say something like, come on over, or probably stay away. They can use their vocalizations to communicate really clearly. Are these mountain goats endangered at all? You know, they're not endangered. They're actually a species of least concern. So, Which is good. Yeah, that's great. We're really happy. We do have them here in Colorado, but they're not even native to our state. But you're right. They're not endangered, just of least concern. 
What other organizations have these goats? Yeah, I know that the Woodland Park uh, Zoo has Rocky Mountain goats because that's where our male Albert came from. And there are a few other institutions throughout America that have them, but not very many. So we're really lucky to have them here at Cheyenne Mountain. We saw these uh, guys on your map and we're like, oh, we have to do these guys because not a whole lot of other places have them. Yeah, they're pretty fantastic. I'm glad you guys came by. So, what are some other fun facts about these mountain goats? Yeah, there's a couple more cool things about them. So you might see on Yazi's eyes, her pupils are long and uh, horizontal, and so these guys are grazers out in the wild, so they need to be able to see around them when they're looking down grazing for most of the day. So those pupils help her have more peripheral vision than you and I have, so that's pretty cool. And then you might see a little bit on Yazi here, she still has a little bit of her winter coat left. So she grows an entire winter coat every winter that keeps her nice and warm, but then every summer she has to take off that outer layer. So we actually have a giant car wash brush inside our barn that she rubs her body against so she can help get that fluff off. She also lets me pull it off as well. But out in the wild, they would be rubbing their bodies on rocks to get all that fluff off when it's summertime. Thank you so much for telling us about this mountain goat here. Thanks for coming by. We're so glad you got to meet Yazi today. And thank you so much. I never see this good anywhere else, so I definitely wanted to learn about it. Definitely. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. And as always, I'll see you next week.